yourself from the establishment, you are not an intellectual. So an intellectual is always anti-establishment. But that's not true in France, Germany, Italy, England, United States, certainly not true in China. So now we know some of the most powerful critics of the policies of a government turn out to be government officials. But of course, in the academic community, the responsibility is some of them will have to play the role of public intellectual. That's true in the mass media. Once the mass media is considered as a propagandist machine for the state, the mass media has lost its uh, critical spirit. It is not public, it is political. And the public uh, stance is difficult to develop. That's true with NGO. Uh, in some societies, we don't have real NGOs, non-governmental organizations, because they are still controlled or licensed by the government. So these are now, once you have the, uh, the so-called public intellectuals in all these domains, and they are able, in some societies, you are not able to do it, they are able to develop horizontal communication and develop public reasoning, responsible public reasoning, then there's a force. Uh, that force may eventually lead to pluralistic society or even civil society. That's the beginning of democratization. So that kind of public reasoning is not only restricted to the various kinds of uh, uh, domains that uh, are considered private, you know, like religion. You know, religion in this case is not also, uh, is also public. So you have two possibilities, uh, two, I mean, two requirements, both of them are absolutely necessary. One is the possible to, to criticize policies, to criticize even the modus operandi or even legitimacy of the government. That's one position in many different domains, the, the business, the uh, academic, mass media should be able to play. The other one is, uh, even though they are independent, any of the ideas they express um, with a strong sense of responsibility will have to be heard. In other words, they have influence. Not only they are independent, but they have influence. Now, uh, over the weekend, we, we talk about two particular ways of dealing with uh, ecology. Two ways, two different ways. One is uh, scientific, and this is absolutely necessary. You know, you, if you deal with uh, water pollution, air pollution, you uh, soil loss, all these questions require intervention. The intervention is rooted in your understanding of the situation. Eventually, develop. Um, an overall, you know, an, an overall project, hopefully involving all the public intellectuals. Because ecology, unlike any other subjects, is not simply a discipline. It is not uh, interdiscipline. It is not even multidiscipline. It involves the whole society. The academic community, the scientific community can do so much. Uh, if the government is not involved, if the legal profession is not involved, if the medical profession is not involved, with all kinds of other organizations not involved, they're not able to deal with it because it's a common human problem. And uh, this common human problem requires not only scientific solution, which is absolutely necessary, you just cannot ignore that. And that's why we do have an organization of scientists uh, in uh, global warming and many other areas, the scientists will tell us what are some of the problems we face. The other one, much more difficult, and I think you mentioned it, uh, much more difficult and probably in the long run essential, uh, that's a mindset, that's a worldview, uh, that is uh, our ability, when I say our, meaning 
all human beings concerned, our ability to develop a different relationship, human earth relationship, a very different one. And I think one of the, uh, the great contribution uh, of uh, neo Confucian thinking is embodying heaven and earth and the earth things. And therefore, nature is never considered as the objects are there for manipulation, for use or abuse. Uh, you have to consider nature as a part of your universe. So sometimes you regard nature as a communion of subjects. This can be very naive. This can be understood as a romantic assertion of universal, uh, universal brotherhood which is totally rejected by Marx Weber. But in the modern world, it's the tough-minded way of dealing with the world. And there are two kinds of people that are the most important ones, are the most effective ones in shaping the world. And uh, that's why overwhelming majority of uh, college students want to move into these two areas. One is expert. You have to become professionally competent. The other one, is uh, management. So you have to be either a manager or an expert and in order to deal with the situation. And yet, if you add an